Hi, I'm Sadie Nardini, founder of Core Strength Vinyasa Yoga, and today we're going to try and do one of my hardest poses, and I think one of the hardest poses there is, the splits. So to get into the splits, you're going to be intelligent, mindful, and go at your own pace, definitely. I'll show you how to do this from beginner level forward. You stop and work wherever you are. Okay, so after you've done a comprehensive yoga practice, at least a half an hour long, including a lot of heating postures like sun salutations and leg stretching postures like triangle pose, uh, Paschimottanasana, bending over your straight leg, standing pose, reverse triangle, standing splits, that sort of thing. Fan pose is also a good one, this one wide, nice and wide angle here. And pigeon pose also. So once you've done a lot of that, uh, you're going to come here into downward facing dog. From downward dog, step one foot forward between your hands. Bring the other knee to the floor and walk your fingertips back as you straighten the front leg. So it's a runner's lunge. I like to take one hand, the opposite hand, underneath my calf and press down into my hand as I lift my hand up. So I'm stretching and activating a straight leg as I fold, but I'm not allowing the knee joint to hyperextend and drop down too far. I'm keeping a nice healthy knee joint this way. So leg is straight, but you're really resisting pressing the hand up. Inhale, offer your heart. Exhale, fold down. Breathing there. I do that twice on each side. And then once you're finished with that, come back into downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward again. Bring your back knee to the floor. Take two blocks here and bring them to your hip line. So wherever your hips are, just bring them about shoulder distance underneath your hands. You can do the highest way, of course, or maybe a little bit lower. So I'll start the highest and you can see how it goes. Back knee scoots back a little, hips stay squared forward. If you start losing the hips and your back leg turns out, forget about it, you're not in alignment. So you want to stay in alignment and then see where your pose is. So you can creep your front foot forward a little bit Pulling those toes back towards you, work on holding the pose with your arms as you stretch the front leg. Back knee is facing down, hips are square, you can press and pull your legs into your uh, hip sockets to square the hips a lot. Again, you're not just passively straightening the leg, you have a little micro bend in the knee for now and you're nice and muscular, hugging both legs with the muscles. Scooting the back leg back a little bit, coming here. So it's great to balance opening your heart and breathing right at the edge of your stretch. And at this point, if you'd like to place a block underneath your thigh where you are, and then use that to press down into, it can be kind of nice to breathe here. Just don't overstretch as you're doing this. Find a place where you're just hitting a nice new boundary in your stretch in your legs. I'm feeling it back here, not so much up here. So I can maybe take it a little bit lower like you will over time, keeping your hips straight forward. Okay, so you can breathe here. Get three blocks if you need to. All right. Once you've tried that, you can switch legs in between when you feel you need to move on. And do the same sequence with the blocks on each side too. One thing I really love is sometimes you'll come low and then you kind of find a plateau. So to widen the hamstring muscles underneath your legs, and get them to stretch out a little bit more, you can place both hands inside your front leg. Bow down, lift your sitting bones back there, and spin them wide behind you. So the front toes actually move in a little bit. You're rotating your leg in, and just a little press back through the legs, nothing too huge. Come back to center, and you'll find the pose will lower a little bit. Then you can do it again. Hands on the inside. Lift the hips up a little and stretch the sit bones back as you reach the heart a little bit lower towards the floor. Leg rotates in. Then rotate hips and legs back to center and you'll go a little bit deeper. So over time, you can do that and it will take you all the way down to the floor into full splits. That day is really nice, but it takes a lot of dedication and effort to make this happen. So once you're here and you're pretty low and it's okay for you, you'll inhale, offer the heart, and exhale, begin to creep forward and take a nice chaturanga arm forward bend over your front leg, okay, in time. To remove yourself from the splits, you're going to gently roll onto the right hip, front leg, and bend the back knee, maybe you need a little help, like I do, just take it forward. And after both sides and you've, you've played and felt into both sides, 
Roll the sit bone flesh back. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, take a nice gentle forward bend to neutralize and bring all your muscles back to center. Waving from side to side. All right, this should feel pretty nice after the split. And then coming back to center into your easy seat. A few cat cows to move all that hip and leg energy up through the spine, energizing you and setting the tone for the rest of your day. From me to you, I hope you've really enjoyed the splits as much as I have. <laughs> and if they're hard for you, don't worry about it. They're hard for most yogis. So work into them mindfully and let the journey teach you what you need to know about being in your moment, opening where you need to, and owning the place where you are. So this pose can be a great teacher. I hope you enjoy it and let me know how it goes. Namaste.